The final is released on December 7th and is a new cross-platform first-person uh, shooter where you mostly stab people with swords anyway. First off, it's a completely free game with a purely cosmetical microtransaction system much like most games nowadays. The game comes with amazing graphics, a unique atmosphere where they are breaking the fourth wall and you're playing an esports competitor who is playing a character inside a simulation of a simulation inside another giant simulation <laughs> and there are also these super cool broadcasters who are commenting on every aspect of the game in real time including which team wiped out who has the most money are about to cash in and more sit back relax and let's explore everything about the finals including game modes physics classes weapons and strategies in this one-stop video guide together and a big congratulations to our winners Speaking of cashing in, that's the main point of the game and it's two game modes, Quick Cash and Bank It. In this game, where you compete in teams of three players, both modes are somewhat similar but offer distinctive gameplay differences at the same time. Quick Cash is what you would consider the more casual mode but also far more strategic in my opinion. The mode focuses on three teams of three fighting over a single 10k vote. In a battle of skill, thievery and cunning, the goal is for someone to extract the vault and go put it in a cash out station then guard it for about two minutes while it finishes uploading in which time any team can steal the cash out and pick up from where the timer was which calls for great strategy regarding when and how you can steal it in bank it the goal is basically the same just completed differently and with four teams instead of three votes of money do exist but dead players also want cash for the kill and drop all of theirs if they fail to hand it in a cash out station which everyone does separately and takes just a few seconds of holding down a button instead of having to guard the station for a couple of minutes you can also see the amount of cash someone is carrying and the broadcasters will announce it if a player is hoarding drug unworthy amounts of gold with them so you can chase them down and pew pew them for the cash whoever reaches the objective amount first or whoever has the most by the time the clock hits zero wins in addition there is a final game mode which is also how ranked games are played the tournament now in the tournament you play the quick cash game mode in games of four teams where the richest two teams advance in a second round of four team quick cash and like the first one two teams are knocked out and the remaining two teams battle it out in a three versus three battle for the first spot now the main gameplay difference with the tournament mode is unlike the casual game modes where you get infinite respawns here you're limited to two respawns per match and if you use them up too early you gotta wait for a revive or a team wipe which in most cases means you lost a vote the game only has several maps as of now but what's more important is the verticality of them almost all maps have high buildings floating or moving platforms and sky bridges. The modes of transportation are numerous, including zip lines, jump pads, and some class specific skills and items. What's most amusing though is the amount of destruction and havoc players can cause in real time. Every single piece of the map, except the ground and foundations, can be destroyed. Not only that, you can actually grab onto and run on demolished pieces of floor, walls, and others. This makes for some great tactics that I will talk about in a bit but also creates new ways to move through the map both horizontally and vertically and yeah you guessed it this game is in fact built on unreal engine 5 akin to other great games like fortnite and the day before what too soon now the game offers three classes which have different playstyles and some can traverse the map way better than others who can specialize in support or tanking. All classes also have access to different weapons, specializations and gadgets which is why we're gonna take a detailed look at each of them. Starting off with the light build. These tiny bastards are quick on their feet, extremely agile and have access to even more impressive skills and weapons that lets them turn into the best 
best assassins this game can offer. I will discuss some meta builds in a minute, but for now we are taking a look at what this class can do in general. Firstly, it's the class that has access to the biggest arsenal of weapons, all of which can kill you in a matter of seconds. Some of the more deadly weapons include the MP5 SMG, the silenced pistol, a double barrel shotgun that one shots other lights in close range, my personal favorite the throwing knives which are amazingly fun to play with and of course the sword which is one of the meta weapons at this point in the game. The light class can use three specs namely the grappling hook which is unlocked by default, the invisibility clock which blurs you out while running making you almost impossible to see and gives you complete invisibility if you are standing in one place. And the evasive dash which grants you a few charges of dash that cool down individually giving you the opportunity of making really important life saving or deadly movements depending on how you use it in the situations you find yourself in. Couple that with some of the class specific gadgets like the breach charge, flashbang, smoke or vanishing bomb, yet another method of turning yourself and your allies invisible and you have all the tools to single handedly clear victory in the tightest of clutches. The major downside of this class is the lack of any defensive options and it only having 150 HP, the lowest of all. Next up is the Average Joe, or so you would think when you see this generic looking class holding a generic default AK-47 and being the first class you can play to unlock the others, but there is so much more depth to the medium build. Apart from being able to dish out decent damage using the AK, which is arguably the best weapon available to the mediums, this class specializes in support with the default spec being a healing beam, much like the one Mercy uses in Overwatch. And yeah, we are only just getting started with the Overwatch references. But hear me out, Overwatch was a great and innovative game release, you're bound to see aspects of it being copy pasted in other games. Anyways, you can also unlock the tourist pack which, well, places turrets that shoot people and the recon spec which is quite useful in detecting people through walls. But even without it, having the sonar grenade in your gadget belt does the job pretty well. In fact, the medium build has the most versatile utility gadget list. You can detect players including invisible ones, you can place a jump pad on the ground for your teammates to use and also you can use the powerful defibrillator which when charged can instantly revive a dead teammate whereas an normal revive is channeled over a few seconds and leaves you completely defenseless. If you're not a fan of the AK-47, you still have powerful options at your disposal like a 6 round revolver, a mighty mid-range shotgun and a somewhat decent grenade launcher. All of this coupled with a health pool of 250 hit points and a decent mobility makes this class pretty useful. Now onto the heavy. These large chubby boys are the tanks of the game. They can go full Reinhardt using a slight hammer and a barrier, can charge through anything and anyone using their default spec and have a bunch of defensive options while wielding really hard hitting weapons. The hammer is pretty painful and can be used to destroy buildings, which comes in handy more often than you would think. There are two machine guns available, the default one and the lighter version which is funnily more powerful than the heavy one. This class can also utilize pretty nasty weapons in the form of the flamethrower and the grenade launcher. Truly terrifying. But where it really shines is with the amount of defense and CC offered, along with the beast size of a health pool standing at 350 hit points, this class cannot be killed easily by no one, not even the most broken builds. As you may have noticed, not all weapons and gadgets are unlocked for me, and that's because of the straight line progression there is in the finals. Items are not unlocked through leveling, but rather you have to buy whatever you fancy using the currency you receive after each game, which doesn't differ that much based on if you won or lost the game. In fact, you get between 80 and 150 bucks per game, meaning it takes between 6 and 8 games on average to unlock an 800 VR item. 
This of course depends on the points you scored individually, which are awarded separately for offense, support and objective, meaning you can do just fine if you prefer to be a healer. This is currently the only method of unlocking gameplay related items and there is no way to earn this currency using real money, so it's safe to say that there is no pay to win involved in this game. Now let's talk meta builds. And even though the game has been out for less than a month, there are some serious competitors for the first nerfs we are bound to see happening. One such is the SWAT light class build. This is an extremely annoying high risk high reward monster weapon which when used in conjunction with the mobility, stealth and agile nature of the class makes my teammates rage quit and uninstall. Yeah, you can shoot a light player easily and be rid of him but in the hands of a skilled player, the SWAT coupled with a vanishing grenade and the evasive dash spec is a walking death sentence for whoever meets him. Speaking of lights, there is yet another annoying build that's actually even scarier than the SWAT, the double barrel shotgun plus invisibility combo. This is one of those Owen one shot combos that either work out or you get sent to the waiting room. But when you get close enough, get the drop on an enemy and put all these shells in his bum, you easily one shot a light or two shot a medium and heavy. Couple that with flashbangs, glitch grenades and a stun gun and you're a walking menace. One last build for the light class is not really that meta, but my personal favorite since I really like playing Genji I in Overwatch. That's of course the throwing knives build. Get the evasive dash as your spec and you can really run any gadgets, but I prefer the preloaded combo of smoke, flashbangs and breach charge, since combined they can create team wiping openings or the sneakiest cash out steals, but more on that later. All in all, the throwing knives are really powerful when played right and of course when you are accurate and accustomed enough. They also feel pretty nice to play with, providing this smooth ninja feeling. Funnily, one of the best medium setups is not only available at the very start, but it's also preloaded once you play the game for the first time. Yeah, that's right, the AK is possibly the best weapon of the medium class due to its high DPS, large mark and decent accuracy. And having a defibrillator at your disposal makes sustaining your team integrity real quick and easy. Put down a jump pad for your homies and grab your healing gun and you are the top support player everyone wants on their team. Honestly, side note, buying the zipline gadget is a great upgrade or even addition to this build. Having gas mines on a switch is also very useful in defending your cash outs and really hard to play around for your enemies. Just a reminder that if you enjoyed these videos, you can tap the like button and subscribe to my channel to easily see more of my content and support me on this journey. Next up is the heavy. Dishing out high damage with the Lewis gun is currently the way to go. Combine this with some great defensive tools like the barrier spec or the dome shield, grab a few grenades and you're the king of the lobby. Not only do you have the potential to kill everything in seconds thanks to the high DPS and large mark of the Lewis gun but you are also incredibly hard to kill, providing defense for your teammates as well. You can switch out the barrier for the charge spec and get even more creative with your offense, depending on your personal preference. Another neat combo is the charge and sledgehammer. Although it's a bit of a meme setup, you can kill anyone in melee range, but you can also demolish buildings like they are made out of crackers. This itself can change the pace of the game when you see the cash out falling from the 4th floor and all the enemies getting choked by their own gas mines. Fun times! I wanted to also share a few general tactics I found to be really useful when the situation calls for it. Firstly, you can attach any kind of gadget on the different barrels you find in game, which you can by the way pick up with F and shoot them out using your left mouse button. The crazy thing is when you attach explosives to the red torpedo looking thing, it explodes for an even higher damage on hit or delivers deadly gas if you attach gas mines, so keep that in mind. As I said earlier, having smokes and a breach charge is really OP when playing light because you can set up a smoke screen and use the breach charge to either drop the cash out from the upper floor or open up a small hole for yourself to steal it before people even realize what happened. I've used this successfully in many situations and it's one of the funniest things to do in this game. Lastly, I wanted to take some time to look at the battle pass. Seeing as this is a completely free game, the battle pass is extremely well made, offering some nice skins including this boxer outfit 
outfit that has your nickname written on the back of the robe, which is pretty cool in my opinion, but what is more interesting is it offers almost 40% more currency than it actually costs if completed fully. This, combined with the fact you can spend 1150 currency for the starter pack to get some skins and your money back and only then buy the battle pass is a really cool value for your money, if you're into that kind of stuff of course. Keep in mind that some of the nicest weapon skins are actually free, like this diamond pistol skin you get early on or the throwing knife skin which is a really amazing pair of faces. In conclusion, I think the finals is a really amazing game so far and I'm having lots of fun with it. In comparison, the last time I had such fun with a new release was when I played Fortnite back in 2017. This game definitely has ways to go and I think more and more people will get hooked, which is why you should be ahead of the curve and give it a chance now, you won't be disappointed. And if you already did try it, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and I'm gonna see you in the next one.